Hi, Wonder Hussy here. Today I'm in the forest in Northern California, near where my mom lives. And I drove up here from Vegas, it's like a 10 and a half hour drive. It's normally, you know, in my truck, it can be a little rough, but guess what? I didn't drive my truck. I drove my brand new 2017 TRD Off-Road Toyota 4Runner. <laughs> That's right, I finally got a new car and a 4x4 at that. And it is long overdue because if you've been watching my videos for any amount of time, you know that I love going off-roading into these really remote, rugged places in the desert, but I'm never able to get there in my poor little truck, so I've had to ride with my sister in her 4Runner. Well, thanks to a generous fan, I now have a brand new 2017 4Runner of my own. And I thought I would make a little video just showing you what it looks like inside. The tour of Wonder Hussie's 4Runner. Okay, first I'm just gonna do a sort of like a pano of the exterior of the vehicle. As you can see, it's pretty rugged, off-road, tires, shocks, all that stuff. We'll get into the details in a minute, but I just wanna go around the vehicle once so you can see what it looks like on the outside. I chose white because I thought it would stay cooler inside white or silver than getting you know red or black i'm still considering maybe getting some kind of super obnoxious paint job on it um a to make it less likely to be stolen and b because i'm an obnoxious person myself and the car that i had before my truck was a bright pink lincoln town car and i still kind of miss having a pink car so you never know i might do something crazy with the paint job but for now i'm gonna leave it white okay now as you can see here it's a TRD off-road. The Forerunner comes in like six different trims. There's the standard soccer mom uh, Forerunner that you see people driving around town. It's an SR5. I didn't get that though because it doesn't have a locking rear differential and that was kind of part of the deal. I wanted to get something with a rear locker. So you gotta go for the next ruggedest model which is the off-road. Now there's one more model called the TRD Pro which is what I really wanted but I didn't really save enough time to go to the dealer and order it. They didn't have any in Vegas, so I would have had to wait eight to 12 weeks for them to ship one from the factory. And I didn't have that kind of time to wait around. In retrospect, I probably should have waited so I could get exactly what I wanted, but I figured this would be good enough. I mean, the difference being the TRD Pro comes with Bilstein shocks and this one doesn't. This one has this KDSS. It's some kind of suspension system that they put in Toyotas. I don't know if that means anything to you car people. But anyways, this doesn't have Bilstein shocks. And so I was kind of weirded out because I read online that this KDSS suspension system can be problematic and costly to fix if you have any problems. And it can also limit how high you're able to lift the vehicle. And I wanted to get it lifted, right? So I can go get more clearance, go more places. But because this is all they had, I thought about it. And do I really need to lift this thing more than it already is? This is already a stage two lift. I don't know how many inches of clearance that is, but I mean, it's a good amount. And I don't plan on like crawling up any rocks or anything like that. So I guess I can live with this KDSS and the amount of lift that it already has. So that's why and how I settled for the off-road instead of waiting out for the TRD Pro. So far, so good. Okay, now going back, uh, I talked to a guy friend of mine and he said, in this video, you want to make sure you show the shocks and the tires. So that's what I'm going to do. So I've already showed you the shocks. I feel bad that I don't know what any of this is. I just kind of had a friend help me buy the car and he told me what I needed. And the tires, I'm sure probably cost about $1,000 a piece. And when I need a new one, it's really going to hurt. But I'm going to try to go easy on them and not puncture them prematurely. I mean, of course I have the extended warranty and everything on all this stuff, but still, you know, in my life, crazy stuff tends to happen. And then these wheels, these FNW wheels, I picked out because they were very plain and simple. I didn't like the ones that they were trying to sell me that had like studs all over and it looked kind of like a, they were very flashy and I'm not a flashy person, at least not when it comes to stuff like this. <laughs> I can be flashy, but not about tires. And then I also had them put on running boards. <laughs> Because I'm only 5'3", right? And like getting into this thing, especially lifted, you know, I wanted it to be easy. Somebody was telling me I should have got something else. I can't remember what it was called. Not a running board, but something that is more rugged and can withstand more abuse from off-roading. Too late, I already got this, so. 
Okay, now let's check out the interior. Now, I got this Toyota 4Runner for two reasons. One, it was a 4x4 and I need a 4x4. Two, I can sleep in it. I've been wanting a car that I can sleep in for a long time because it'll really um, expand my opportunities for going crazy places. Like right now, I have to sleep in a tent. And especially when I was up in grizzly country last summer, it was a little sketchy. So I wanted something with a nice hard exterior. <laughs> So I got the 4Runner, which my sister sleeps in the back of her 4Runner all the time. And you can see it's got a very roomy back area. And those back seats fold forward to create a sleeping area, which I'll show you in a minute. Now with these new 4Runners, they come with this really cool feature called a, a sliding cargo deck in the back. So you're supposed to be able to just pull this out like a tailgate. It's on rollers. And now you have a tailgate. You can cook, have your little camp stove set up, all that. Well, unfortunately for me, this model doesn't have one, okay? Because I was in a hurry, and I live in Vegas. If you think about it, Vegas is kind of like an island. There's not a lot of other cities around it, right? You have to drive like 300 miles in any direction to get to another city. So we're limited to our vehicle stock, right? There's only three Toyota dealers in Vegas. None of them had an off-road with a rear sliding cargo deck at all apparently, or at least the people that I bought it from didn't want me to think that there were any in town because they weren't in their network. I don't know. All I know is this car here had to come from Flagstaff because it was the only off-road in white in within a 300 mile radius that they this dealership was willing to truck in for me. So I kind of had no choice. Again, I could have waited longer and I probably should have, but I was in a hurry. So I got this one without the rear sliding cargo deck, which I figure won't be the end of the world. Like, oh, boo-hoo, I can't pull out my cargo. Eh. You know, it'd be nice to have, but it's not a deal breaker. Or so I thought. Okay, now I'm going to show you how these rear seats fold down. Oh, by the way, don't worry, we'll open the hood and all that stuff and look at the motor. But right now I want to show you what's important to me. Okay, so to fold the seat back, you pull this uh, bottom part forward, right? Like that. And then the seat headrest folds over. And there's a little switch here that you push. And then that folds forward, right? Like that. Okay, see how that folded flat? And that's where you sleep on. Like in my sister, she sleeps on it. But you probably can't see this because I don't have that rear sliding cargo deck, there's like a mm, three inch dip between the back area and this. So it's not a level sleeping surface. Okay, I'll be honest, when I found that out, when I picked the car from the dealership, I was, I kind of had a meltdown because literally, like I said, I bought this car for two reasons, four by four and sleep in it. And to find out that it's not a level sleeping surface, kind of screwed the whole deal up, but it's too late now. And I mean, I, just, despite that, I like the car, so I'm just gonna have to work out a solution for sleeping. I think I've been talking to some people that live in their cars and they were saying I can get like those foam shop mats, the ones that are like big puzzle pieces. I can buy them for cheap at Harbor Freight. And then I could just lay a couple, two, three, maybe even four layers of that down to make it one flat surface. I mean, it's an added hassle and inconvenience. And it's kind of ghetto, but what are you gonna do? If I really can find a cool crafty friend to help me I'd like to just build my own slide out rear cargo now it can't be that hard right like I can just get a piece of plywood cut it to fit the back and then have another level on top of it on rollers or something and I don't know I can, I'm sure I can figure something out right as it is I've already slept in the back uh Tuesday night I slept in Bolinas this little town by the beach I slept in the back of it there and it was fine I laid on it just lumpy like that and you know what it sure beats sleeping in my Ford Ranger so I'm not gonna complain about it okay now, before we get out of the back here, point out a few other little options. Um, there's these little kind of shelf areas built in, which is nice, like for st storing stuff. I got my umbrella, my toilet paper, I don't know, just random odds and ends. And then here you can see there's a, sorry about the light. There's not only a um, charger there, a car charger, but there's also a 120 volt charger. Can you see that outlet? Sorry, I know the light's terrible right now. I'm in the forest, the lighting's problematic. And then over here on this side, there's a little cubby that has my jack and my um, tire tool and all that stuff if I need to change my tire, which by the way, is under here. You can see the spare tire down there, full-size spare. Oh, and I did get a tow package or at least a tow hitch. 
I think I have to get the electrical installed still, but that's okay, it's easy. So that's the back. Like I said, it was pretty roomy and comfortable when I slept in it the other night. And I'm gonna make some customizations. So I'm gonna get some foam blocks to block out the windows, stuff like that. But yeah, pretty nice, huh? Okay, and then you fold the seat back up and now you've got a spacious rear seat big enough for three people. I got this fabric interior too, which is what I wanted. I didn't want leather or um, that fake leather they do because I live in the desert, man. It'd be hot and sweaty. I prefer fabric. So in that respect, I definitely got what I wanted. Oh, and by the way, back here, if you're a passenger in the back of my car, it's so dark you probably can't see, but there's air vents and there's also uh, phone chargers back here. So you'll be riding in style, okay? Okay, now let's go check out the inside where the driver sits, okay? This is where I was all day the other day driving up here. <laughs> Look at this thing. I mean, first of all, I don't know if you can see how big this thing is next to me. <laughs> like the running board comes up to my knees. The car is taller than me with the lift. It's, it's like driving a tank. It's so much bigger than my, my old car was a Ford Ranger. Um, V6, two wheel drive. And it was fine. It got about 17 miles a gallon. This gets about the same. The gas mileage is a little bit worse on this because of the giant off-road tires that I put on it. But otherwise it got almost as good of gas mileage as my truck. So I wasn't, you know, I wasn't hit too hard at the pump. Okay, let's get into the seat. I'll show you some things in here. Okay, now we're in the driver's seat. You know, it's pretty straightforward, but I'll put my keys in here and show you a few things. Now the first exciting thing to me is, look, da da da, Toyota. Safety message, don't mess with the screen while you're driving. It comes with a free three week trial of Sirius XM radio. How cool is that? Let me see if I can get it up for you guys. Oh, look what's on right now. Santo and Johnny, I love Santo and Johnny. Oh, that's my iPod, that's not even the XM here. I got Santo and Johnny on my iPod, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, you know what? No, it's not loading because there's no signal. We're up here in the woods at my mom's and she doesn't get a very strong uh, cell signal up here. So trust me when I say that I have a three week free trial to Sirius XM and it's been amazing. You can see here, I've already saved channel 17 as a preset, that's Yacht Rock, which is kind of the smooth rock, like the Doobie Brothers, Christopher Cross, that kind of stuff, love it. So it's a spacious passenger seat here. You know, the usual stuff going on, lights. There's my four wheel drive stuff, a track Crawl, you can put this one into crawl mode and it'll go all slow, it's cray cray. And then down, actually down here, there's a shifter that is what you use to engage the four wheel drive. All right, look how cool that is. I'm guessing that's low, neutral, H2 and H4. I don't know, this is all stuff that I'm gonna have to figure out. I haven't done any four wheeling yet, but I need to practice. So right now I've just been using this good old fashioned park, reverse drive, neutral, all that stuff. SD, S is some kind of weird driving mode. I don't know, I haven't used that, I just use D. D is supposedly the most fuel efficient driving mode. So I'm trying to save gas, all right? And then, you know, when you're driving here on the wheel, there's all your controls for the radio and for the phone. This is one of those deals where you can just talk on the phone over the car speaker. It's pretty convenient, really nice. And over here we got you know, the controls for the mirror and all that stuff. You know, pretty uh, straightforward stuff that you would see on any car. But it's a very comfortable ride. I mean, there's all these controls back here that you can adjust the, not only the angle of the seat, the height of the seat, the lumbar support, you can go every which way with it. It's pretty cool. So uh, it was a lot more comfortable than my truck. Like I said, driving up here, I, I drove 11 hours total and it really didn't feel like 11 hours. It was pretty comfy. Okay, and then there's a few decorations I've transferred over already. One of my fans sent me these, this cool boxing glove air freshener. <laughs> I guess he's really into boxing. He sent me a bunch of boxing gloves and sexy boxing outfits. He wanted to do a photo shoot in them, but we haven't done it yet. And then here's a cross that I found when I was exploring the desert once. I hung that up and then check this out. Up on my visor, I always like to have a, a little, when I had this little Buddha thingy hung up in my truck. Not that I'm a spiritual person, but I thought it was cool to have just to remind myself when I'm stuck in traffic, don't stress out, just breathe, that kind of deal. Well, I needed something to hang it to. Thankfully, I got these cool Beatty Cowboys garters. Look at these. 
I met this really cool guy named John. Hi, John, at an event last weekend, and he gave me these really neat old-fashioned saloon girl garters with the Beatty Cowboys pins on them. The Beatty Cowboys are a group of guys who do cowboy reenactments in Beatty, Nevada. Really cool guys. Check them out sometime. So that's the extent of my decorating thus far. Well, like I said, I was talking to some guys who live in their vans full time. Um, and I got all kind of tips on, like the one guy had a bungee cord stretched from the handle here all the way across to the handle here. And he would just drape a, like a black curtain across that when he sleeps in the back at night. So I'm gonna do that. In addition to cutting out foam squares to wedge into the windows to black them out at night as well. Same thing, he said he just used that foam shop mat stuff and he cut them like an eighth of an inch too big around on the sides so that it'll, he can squeeze them into the windows and they stay put. So that was a pretty good idea, so I'm gonna try that. Okay, enough yakking. I know everybody just wants to see what's under the hood, so let's check that next. Okay, we gotta pull the switch to open the hood. Listen to that, dang, sounds like I'm opening the vault over at Fort Knox or someplace like that. Okay, let's see. This thing is a beast, you'll see. Pull. and then it's got look at that you don't even have to use one of those old-fashioned like my truck you had to use an old-fashioned stick to prop it up this has those cool hydraulic ones but look how clean this motor is guys first of all you can't really see anything because it's all enclosed look at that it's plastic too you think plastic would get so hot it would melt but apparently not I mean I don't know anything about cars I feel really bad that I can't go, oh, here's the this and here's the that. But all I can say is you can see how sparkling clean everything is. It's wonderful. I've never owned a new car in my entire life. So it's pretty exciting. It's my third car. My others have all been used. Actually, it's my fourth car. I had a fourth car. My first ever car that I had was also used. I only drove it for like six months. But this is my third like real car that I've driven for a long time. Just gonna do like a slow pan around under the hood so you can see look how clean the battery is I mean that's the thing like on my Ford the battery terminals were totally corroded like this one even has like a protective covering on the plus side oh that's hardcore I don't want to break anything so I'm not gonna mess around like I said I got the extended warranty the eight year 125,000 mile warranty um, just in case anything breaks. I know like those warranties aren't supposed to be a good buy according to Consumer Reports, but I don't know. I know nothing about cars. I had the money. I had a friend helping me with the purchase, really good friend, went into the dealership and helped me negotiate with the salespeople and really streamlined the process. His name was Eddie. Hey Eddie, if you're watching this, thank you. Um, I kicked him back some cash for helping me, but he, uh, I think he got them to sell me the warranty at a really good price too. So he really did help out quite a bit. He used to work for that same dealer. So he had an in with him. Anyways, that's under the hood. Also, I suppose I should mention that I got this at Findlay Toyota in, gotta cover my license plate. Not that it matters, but Henderson, Nevada, which Henderson is just a suburb of Las Vegas, but that's where the Toyota dealership was. So. That's where I got it. Anyways, do one last wide shot of the whole thing. I can tell right away that I'm going to have some amazing adventures in this car. I mean, like I said, it was comfortable enough to sleep in the back. Once I get it all fitted out with a sleeping platform, curtains, all that stuff, there will be no stopping me. I mean, I can go anywhere with these beastly tires and these crazy shocks, right? Look, that one's at 2.5. Hey, I wonder if it goes up to 11. So I know there's certain things that I want to get uh, before it's really ready to go tear up the desert this fall. I want to get a cargo box for the top, like one of those cage style ones with just like a canvas bag in it that I can throw extra stuff up in, like firewood, whatever. I want to get some really bright LED lights, you know how they do that, like a bar light or whatever, so I can see when I'm driving out in the middle of nowhere. And I want to get... A, maybe a winch would be good to have on the front in case I get stuck, I don't know. Uh, at the very least I should have a tow strap and an air compressor slash battery charger. Um, and then, I mean it already has pretty good skid plates underneath. I feel like those are the only things I need like right off the top. 
Oh, maybe a jerry can for extra gas. I mean, if you can think of anything that I should get put on this, comment, put it in the comments below um, and let me know. But off the top of my head, that's all I could really think of for now. Because it's, to be honest, it's already a pretty good beast as it is. I mean, driving it, <laughs> it was fun. It rides really smooth. It handles a little wonky because of the off-road tires. You have to be careful on the turns, but you know, just keep me awake behind the wheel. No complaints. Oh, also, I forgot one other thing up on the roof. I forgot that I got these. I don't know that this makes any difference. But they put those crossbars on the roof rack. They're sliding crossbars. They're adjustable. Like I said, I'm going to get a cargo rack anyways. So I really didn't care so much about those. They were already on it as part of the dealer package. Which, by the way, also part of the dealer package. I don't know if you can tell from here, but these windows are tinted really dark. I didn't ask for that. And I stupidly forgot to ask if the windows were tinted before I agreed to buy the vehicle. And they're, they're fine in the back. I mean, in fact, the privacy tent is good for when I want to sleep in the back. But in the front driver's side, not only am I pretty sure it's illegal in California, but it's also super dangerous. I was driving along Highway 1 in the forest by Muir Woods the other night, and it was so dark I couldn't see out my side view mirror. It was freaking dangerous. I had to roll the window down and it was cold so I had to blast the heater just so I could see where I was going. It's a huge design flaw. I don't know why people would want to get their front window tinted that dark. It's stupid. So I think I might actually end up having to go back and pay extra to have them put in a regular window on this side, which is more money I'm going to have to spend. But it was my own fault for stupidly not I mean, I should have read over all the parts of this thing with a fine tooth comb before I agreed to buy it, but I was in a hurry and you know, you know how it is when you go into these car dealers. Even though I had a friend with me who was helping the process, you still feel like you're getting hosed. And it's just a very smarmy, uncomfortable experience. Not that I'm saying anything bad about the people at the particular dealership that I went to. I think they're all like that. I don't know how anybody who works as a car salesperson can live with themselves. It just seems like a horrible way to make a living. Especially the guys that sell you the warranties and stuff, right? Because that's supposedly the real, right? But all things being said... I love this car. It's a great car. I haven't named it yet. I'm just kind of waiting for the name to come to me because I like to name my things. And I'm really happy with it. <laughs> I'm really grateful to this generous fan who helped me with it. I know a lot of people think or have been even saying on my Facebook page, like, oh, did you have to blow the guy or blah, blah. I really feel sorry for anyone who thinks that's the only reason that somebody would do something nice for a person. If you live the kind of life where the only reason you would do a nice thing for somebody is because they blew you, you have a sad, empty life. Okay? That's all I'm going to say about that. This was a gift. There were no strings attached. I would argue that I've worked my buns off making all these YouTube videos. People don't realize watching this. Uh, let me tell you something. I only make $400, if that, a month off of YouTube. Which, if I break it down hourly, like how many hours it takes me to travel to the places, shoot the content, edit it, maybe $5 an hour. It's not a lot of money, dude. I only make $35,000 a year total, even with modeling and everything. I just know how to live a nice, cheap lifestyle, and I live well. So, guys, I didn't blow anybody or sleep with anybody to get this. It was just a gift, and I'm extremely grateful for it. And that fan, you know who you are. I appreciate you. And I also appreciate my friend, Eddie, for helping me with the dealer process. And I appreciate my other friend. Who was the other friend I was just talking about? Oh, my friends that showed me about putting the foam tiles in. I really appreciate all the advice I got from them. Listen, I appreciate all my wonderful friends. Okay, you guys are amazing. I appreciate it. I don't care what anybody says. I'm not blowing any of you, okay? I'm just gonna get in my truck and go for another adventure. And I can't wait for you guys to roll along with me.